from the Philippines. Good evening to all. I will stay in brief the very reasons why we opted to automate our elections. We have been holding elections for the past 100 years and the system has remained the same for more than a hundred years. So the election system then, we write names in the ballot. So with ballot paper, we write as many as 32 names for candidates voting for 11 positions from the national to the municipal level. And administering an election with 54 million voters, 250,000 polling stations, 100,000 candidates for the 17 positions or jobs open for them can be a logistical and administrative nightmare for any election body. So we write names on the ballots. Polling station officers manually count the ballots one by one, and the counting can last as long as 18 hours. The results are likewise tabulated manually and aggregated from polling station to this national tabulation center, and this involves seven steps all manually run. In the process, Errors are committed too often because of fatigue. But more uh, scary is fraud occurs at all levels from the polling station down to the National Tabulation Center. And the errors, not counting fraud, can be decisive at all levels. In 2004, for instance, the difference between the 12th and the 13th placer for the Senate, we elect 12 was less than 10,000, and we had then 215,000 polling stations. So just an error in only 5% of the polling stations can affect the national outcome of the election. More importantly, or more uh, of concern would be the local levels where differences would be as many as only 5 to 10 votes. So that's, uh, these are some of the reasons. No? So there are undesirable consequences, really, of the um, manual uh, voting system. What is 10 at the polling station becomes 100 at the municipal level, becomes 1,000 at the district level, becomes 10,000 at the national level. So we opted then to go to automate the elections because then human intervention is eliminated and therefore errors are prevented. Fraud in the counting and in the aggregation of results is likewise prevented. And ballots are counted and tabulated with considerable speed and results are known in a few days. In the old system, the tabulation and aggregation can last as long as 40 days. And this keeps the people guessing, they get anxious, they uh, suspect that something is being done. So these were some of the basic reasons why we automate. One, prevent uh, errors. Two, prevent uh, manipulation in the count and in the tabulation. Three, of course, facilitate voting on the part of the voters. They will not be writing names on the ballot anymore. And the workload of the polling officers are considerably reduced. Now, Talibert will tell us on the uh, uh, role that number played in the automation history of the Philippines. Uh, let me go through very quickly Pat, and on the, on the role of number, and we go back a little bit. Uh, uh, to 1992, when we started intervening and we started assisting uh, the Commission on Elections, these are election management body, to modernize. Uh, but for, for starters, the product that Lampel had delivered is what is known as the Operation Quick Count uh, on, or a parallel vote count, which is a non-sample 
uh, method uh, initiated by NAMPRAL. So we were so concerned about the counting. Um, and it showed a, a particular benefit for everyone that the parallel vote count, which is not uh, <coughs> not sampled, is, is done. So NAMPRAL has worked with, with COMLEX since 1992, and we very much wanted that the elections be modernized because of the processes earlier articulated by by my colleague, Mr. Magua. We were in the advisory committee of the COMLEX because we were helping them draft like, the law. There are four revisions of the law. We have helped draft in all four, and we sort of became familiar as we went through the process, very familiar with the technology, with the arguments behind you know, why we should automate, and also the arguments behind why we should not adopt a new technology uh, because people were not ready uh, or something. So in the course of our participation, we were able to survey voting and counting systems, and we were also to see these systems being implemented here in the country. The issue that we face, and this is basic, is that what is appropriate technology for us? It has gone through, this, this topic has gone through several iterations, and the discussion has been, what is it that voters are likely to, to seek comfort when we change the system? And the answer here is that we need still a paper ballot. So our system was centered on a paper ballot. There has still to be a paper ballot for the voters to use. Although, one of the systems that we have tested in one of the regions here in the country is a paperless system or a direct recording electronic vote system. The other issue that we have to, to, to consider is whether we should use a uniform system throughout the country or not, uh, or whether there should be different systems that uh, run, run parallel to each other based on demographics or geography, because not all places in the Philippines have, let's say, wireless connection. Now, the issue also of whether to lease or to purchase, uh, we, we needed to, to see a financial reason why we should go one or the other. And then there is a procurement law in the Philippines, which is a bit stringent, that we need to observe, not just in the process, but also the composition of companies going to joint venture with Filipino companies, and, and so on and so forth. Successes and lessons for us, we can say that we were able to facilitate private sector participation in the discussion on what systems to use. We were able to bring IT people, IT professionals, logisticians, ad agencies, financial institutions, and the academy going into some testing and some sort of a, uh, what you call this, a uh, work in progress examination. Finally, we think we were able to enhance the knowledge and oversight capacity of, of uh, domestic election observers and civil society in general. But on the, on the oversight side, on the oversight part, we would say uh, I was one of those who filed a complaint against a COMLEC official because of the non-transparency in the nature of the affairs that she had conducted, the, the use of technology or the bringing in of technology. And we had filed an impeachment complaint against that person for corruption and plunder. So these are, in, in essence, this is what we had gone through in the role of NAMPRAL into how we were able to modernize our elections. I'll turn you over to Eric for, for this for the next segment.